Ja. We left Vancouver on May 1st and we started uh, driving east across Canada. Um, we went as far as Winnipeg and then headed south uh, to the States and that was sort of a whole issue about whether or not we'd get into, um, into the United States and cross the border because under NAFTA this kind of trading is illegal. Every day it's sort of waking up and saying, yeah, I can get up and put myself out there for another day, because that has been hard. Uh, not hard like I can't do it, but it takes some energy for me to be able to put myself out there in the sense that I'm driving into new cities and I don't know where I'm going, and it's hard. It's like I'm always doing that outside of my own comfort zone, right? I don't know how I'm going to drive into the city and like, oh, are people really going to come? Are they, you know? putting myself, you know, all my stuff and everything kind of out there and talking to people um, and just wondering, you know, like pulling into a new truck stop and it looks scary and I'm going to be there for two days and so you just kind of go, and it never is as scary in reality as you imagine it might be. Hi, my name is Jeff Dedman. And I hope that you find yourself a nice little gift. <laughs> and I hope that you bring a nice little gift, yes. Uh, at Burning Man, people give uh, gifts and uh, exchange gifts. It's a gift-based economy. Yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be a token in society that exists for one week. stuck with me for a couple of years and uh, I remember looking at it many times and I was thinking, what am I doing here? In many ways it's not my primary emphasis to, you know, to try and say, yeah, this is art um, to, to people. I think it, it's much more of a social activity. I mean, for me in my sort of academic art world setting, yeah, it's art for me. Um, but I don't, I don't think that's the important part of this project for when I stop on a street in Montreal. I think it's much more important for people to engage and see it as sort of a community exchange um, and uh, think about the objects we have in our sort of consumer culture, to think about, oh, the fact that I'm trading things, and oh, what do you mean this free trade? Oh, okay. Oh, I, oh, I never really thought about NAFTA that way. What do you mean it's illegal under NAFTA? You know, and generating those kinds of questions, thinking about, well, what is this tag you've got on this item? Well, I don't, what's it for? Can I take it off? Is it tracking me? You know? And so to kind of talk about, well, what the technology does, what it doesn't do, and how um, the future implementation of it will, uh, you know, does involve some risks. So that's where I, I place the emphasis. So tell me about some of the stuff. We got some good stuff. Well, today it was kind of cool. We got some prison issued running shoes from Korea. <laughs> That one guy in the black leather jacket, did you see him earlier? He, he traded some running shoes in and he got them when he was in prison in Korea, apparently for uh, forging a diploma so he could teach English while he was there. And he got told on and so they came after him and he got thrown in prison for four months. And those were the running shoes that they give you, I guess, as part of your uniform. I lost my car, my motorcycle, my dog, my cat. 80% of all the stuff I accumulated while I was in Korea, you know, I had bad stuff. And uh, four months of my life, I'm like, I have to get some stuff. So, these shoes were kind of a souvenir, but actually, if you look very carefully, here's a magnet that is in the house. 
<laughs> that was my prison number, 974. Can you see that? So what's the better stuff, the shoes or the story? The stories are almost always better. Almost always. And that's really what it is. I mean, in a way, the stuff is incidental. It's the stories. You know, everybody's got a story and we put so much into these things, that, you know, and there's just a thing, it could be a pen, but it's like I wrote this novel with this pen or something, right? Like, it's amazing what, what stories we sort of, or how we think about things. I think more, I'm more relaxed about not being in control. <laughs> <laughs> of anything. <laughs> um, not knowing so much, you know, the traffic, the truck. Is it going to break down? Okay, I thought we'd park here, but that didn't work. Okay, I thought it'd be a great day, but it's pouring rain. Uh, I got lost. Uh, we didn't make it across the border, you know, what from one thing to the next. Um, we can only plan about a week or so at a time. I mean, we've got larger plans, but the sort of detailed part, and every day is different, so it's really taking that kind of, I don't know, zen thing <laughs> of living in the moment, which I think is, and not being tied to anything. I've chosen to keep myself in a very vulnerable position for a long time, as opposed to choosing to do it once in a while, you know. Uh, so that is, is kind of different, and I, I can feel that it sort of pushes me, like, every day, but I also, Every time it's a good experience, so it also gives me some sort of trust that it's going to be okay. And I think that's what I want people to think about a bit. Like, you know, we live in this, you know, climate of fear uh, in a time or times when governments and people are trying to sort of build fortresses and, and, and be isolated from other people so they don't have to deal with that. Don't let any bad guys in. I'll just stay in my little fortress. Um, I'm trying to reach out and be as, like, as open and vulnerable as I can be with people that I don't know and sort of trust that someone will take care of us. So that Andy brought bagels and I don't know Andy and he heard me on the radio and he came and brought me bagels so we could have a snack is amazing, you know, and we've had people do that. Um, some people have traded us a meal or a shower or whatever. So I don't know, it's just sort of trusting that it'll work out. <laughs>